Coming to you live from George Finney Stadium on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University. Welcome inside our coverage of BW men's soccer tonight in a big conference clash with one of the top teams in the OAC the last decade or so. It's the Ohio Northern Polar Bears. Alongside Cal Klimo, I'm Brendan Gulick. BW and Ohio Northern has been an entertaining series over the years. In fact, uh, BW has played fairly well against the Polar Bears uh, as time has gone past. But the last couple seasons, Ohio Northern has won each of the two games they've played in the regular season. Last year, kind of a one-sided uh, game, 7-1. to one. Ohio Northern was one of the best teams in the country a year ago. And, and even though they're 11-5-1 overall this year, they've struggled a little bit in conference play. They should be conference tournament bound, Kyle. But this is a game tonight that uh, Ohio Northern really has to have on the road. And BW is trying to play spoiler. Yeah, they are. You know, it's a big game for ONU, big game for BW. Um, I mean, ONU wants a, potentially a higher seed in the, in the tournament, uh, just like everybody does. So, you know, they're going to come out here, and they're going to try and do their best to make sure that they come out with a W. Baldwin Wallace has unfortunately had kind of a tough season, but they've probably played better than their record indicates. The one five and one in conference play, but for the most part, they've been really competitive in games and just had a couple of stretches here and there where things have fallen apart. And the problem is, during those little lulls, they've paid for every mistake they've made. And so uh, it's it's forcing the team to really kind of hunker down and, and feel like, okay, we've got to play a full 90 minutes. And tonight, they know they have to play that kind of a game or else they could be in for a long night. We're going to step aside for just a minute because we spoke with head coach Reed Ayers before the game. We want to get that in before the game starts. So here's our pregame conversation leading up to tonight's game with Ohio Northern. Yellow Jackets and Polar Bears getting ready for tonight's conference action. It's uh, it's a big one whenever Ohio Northern comes to town. We talk with head coach Reed Ayers. And, and Reed, I know we're uh, kind of coming down the home stretch of the regular season. This is the final week of competition. And uh, I know it's been challenging because the team has played okay, um, but the results maybe not where you want them. So how do you try to keep a team mentally uh, in a good place when, when you're playing, let's say, 80 to 85 really strong minutes, but the couple of minutes where, you know, where, where things just happen to spiral out uh, are really kind of what hurts you? Well, I think the, the players take a lot of responsibility for that. And uh, I have been in, incredibly impressed with their attitude. They're, they're coming to training. They're, they're working hard. Um, they're frustrated like all of us. Um, you know, they, they, they feel like they've, they've played at a level that they should be getting some results, but they just, at the end of the day, we just haven't got it. So um, I think they're, they're aware of it. Um, I think they just, they just need to grind. They just need to, to put through it and, and find a way when things aren't going well. And because in a game of soccer, there's, there's ebbs and flows. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're a really, really good team playing a really, really poor team. They're, you're not going to dominate the game for 90 minutes. There's going to be periods where you're on your back foot. So um, what we have to do a better job of is just when we're not really playing and the other team is, is going, then we have to be able to, to um, stem that momentum and, and, and force it to turn. So, you know, I, like I said, I give the guys a lot of credit. They, they, in training, they're, they're, they're continuing. They, there's no give up in this group. Uh, and hopefully the, some of that hard work will pay off tonight. You've got an Ohio Northern team tonight that um, I would say maybe the last decade or so, they've probably been the most successful team in the conference. Uh, they typically play really, really hard. Um, for whatever reason, this year, they, they've struggled a little bit. They're more in the middle of the pack, but their overall record has is, is proven to be pretty good. Uh, and I think because the conference is so deep, they're feeling like they could make a tournament run. But going into the final week of the season, they haven't locked up a tournament spot yet. How much of the spoiler idea does the team try to take from you know from a, a mental standpoint? Um. I mean, anytime you, you play Ohio Northern, it's 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 gonna be uh, it's gonna be circled on the schedule. I mean, uh, you, uh, the guys are not gonna need any extra uh, inspiration or motivation to play these guys. I, I, we we haven't really addressed the spoiler aspect because I think that uh, that signifies you're not there. And you know, so we go out and we treat each game the the way uh, uh, the way we want to play, how we want to play, and and to go get things done. So. Um, you know, we haven't really addressed that, but I mean, certainly if we could if we could zing them tonight, that would be it would be great. But uh, Northern's a very very good team. They uh, um, they graduated a bunch of guys last year, so it's a it's a team that's still probably still trying to find themselves a little bit. Um, they've had some really really good results, and they've had some results that they probably aren't aren't thrilled with. So uh, I'm looking forward to our guys, you know, rising to the occasion and and 
not necessarily playing the role of spoiler, but playing to the level that I hope that they're capable of. I know that um, we're talking about a results or performance based business here, right? This is the, the idea is to win. Um, but if you can take the record away from it, what have you been pleased with this year? I, th- I think in general our our ideas, especially in the in the final third, I think um, uh, our willingness and our ability to share the ball. I think some of the movements, some of the spacing, again, especially in the final third, have been have been really really good. Um, you know, we have a, we have a kid right now that's in the top five in the country in scoring, and Danny Rupel and. Um, Danny's a very good player, but it hasn't been Danny by himself. It's um, uh, the other night against Otterbein, uh, a double assist goal. Um, you know, we've and we've had a boatload of those, and those aren't just uh, trying to pad people's stats. It's 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 happening. A lot of uh, a lot of one touch play, a lot of uh, creative play. So that element, I've been I've been thrilled with. I think it's um, uh, it's something that uh, certainly we have some talented players in in the front part of the field, but uh, the ideas and their their willingness to to continue to work and to continue to share the ball has been really, really good for us. How about from your underclassmen in particular? Because much like Danny and, and uh, other guys like Michael Snowball, uh, I know you've had a lot of underclassmen see some time this year. Do you feel like that class is growing in the right direction toward, hey, we can really win a conference championship with this group? Yeah, I think, you know, down the road, I mean, that's that's something um, every year it's a new, um, you know, we're – case in point this year I mean I think we're a different team when we have Kurt Rainey on the field um, you know who we lost during the preseason but that being said I mean I've seen tremendous growth in Bryce Posner uh, every every week I mean the kid gets better and better and I think he is going to be a very very good player for us um, Michael Snowball had a uh, couple injury issues that, that uh, it seemed like when he just got it going uh, he was out for a couple weeks but he's back um, I'd, I'd still like to see Michael be a little bit more consistent, but there's no doubt the kid has got some talent and he's going to be uh, he's going to be a very very influential player for us. And I think a couple of our sophomores that are uh, Jake Woodruff uh, didn't play much as a freshman, but he's he's started uh, every game this year. So in theory, he's still kind of a freshman as well. So we've seen some some great growth out of him. So I think a, a lot of our young players continue to get better. Well, hopefully tonight's a, a, a good challenge for BW because. It's an Ohio Northern team that uh, really needs to win, and I think this is a Yellow Jacket team that's definitely on the cusp of, uh, of, of doing some special things. Good luck. Have fun. Thank you. All right. More when we come back on BWYellowJackets.com. Well, that happens to be right now. We're already back because we've got, uh, we've got a game to get underway here this evening. Ohio Northern and BW just about ready to go. Kyle, as we kind of line up before this game, I, I know the field seems like on, on one side it's tilted a little bit with Ohio Northern being a, a definite favorite coming in. But what are you looking for from BW in terms of just an ability to relax, go out and, and execute what they're trying to? I think they, you know, the key for them is to play the way that they were, you know, they've been training to play. Um, you know, they've done a pretty decent job so far in the season and it's showed and, you know, obviously the results haven't gone their way, but I'd like to see them pick it up again and, um, you know, go from there and keep playing the way, the way that they are because obviously it, it's working at, at some extent because they're not playing bad. So, you know, the results just haven't gone their way and, you know, hopefully it'll come for them tonight. Underway at George Finney Stadium. Ohio Northern in their black and orange. Oba Wallace in the white and yellow striped tops with white shorts. You see Danny Rupel trying to apply some pressure already up at the top of, uh, at the, top of the formation. Give you the starting lineups here in just a moment, but Rupel is always the focal point on offense, one of the top goal scorers across all of Division Three soccer. He and Michael Snowball, along with Candies, will be at the uh, at the three forward spots. It's Michael Bringard defensively who just knocked that one away. The rest of the group for Baldwin Wallace in the midfield is Jeremy Faust, Bryce Posner, Joey Geither, and then across the back line, David Elson, J.T. Tominick, Garrett McHugh, and Jake Woodruff from left to right with Pat Mehal in between the pipes. For Ohio Northern, Anthony Denoy, Colin Johnson, Corey Lanes. There are three attacking forwards. This is Johnson in the midfield, working over to Denoy. Pressure from Woodruff. The guy threw one away from Joseph Schulte, who's at the right mid. J.J. Fortner in the middle uh, of the midfield. He's a central midfielder. Chris Garvin, a tremendous left midfielder, and he really is the engine that makes Ohio Northern go. 
Mac Tompkins, Grant Kayot, Michael Bringard, Mitchell Colvin, the left to right across the defensive group. And then they've got a freshman in goal, Dylan Plank, who's had a really nice season. Ten wins, three losses with him in goal. Five of those wins were shutouts. He's only allowed 11 goals in 13 games. One of the top keepers in the OAC. Long ball played ahead for Johnson. But cut off nicely defensively by Garrett McHugh. Fortner thought maybe he could leave it off for Denoy. And on the foot race, Denoy wins it. He's able to beat David Elson and Jake Woodruff, and he tried to slip one through that right side. Almost found the right post. That was actually a far better opportunity than I thought Denoy would end up with. So he makes, uh, makes a little noise early, but nothing went home. Two and a half minutes gone by, no score. Hall sends it clear. Kennedy's making his second start of the season tonight. At the right forward spot. Cannon's one of those kids that is really pushing to be out there battling a knee injury, even though the season hasn't been great. He's not taking his playing time for granted. And uh, I think if Reed Ayers could have a few more Cannon Ds on the team, I think he'd feel uh, even better about the group. He just he loves the way that Cannon goes out and competes. And Kyle, he alluded, it, you know, alluded to the fact in the pregame show, you know, that look, the, the record isn't good, but guys are still out there working really hard, and he's proud of their work ethic this year. Yeah, you know, and it, 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 sh it shows. Um, you know, they've, they haven't gotten the results, obviously, like Reed said, but they've come out and they've, they've been in the game for most of them. There's been a few where the results were a little hefty. Chance here for Schulte. He's able to turn around. And as Northern tried to tap it to the middle, the ball fell to Denoy. Keeps it alive, throws it toward the middle, and Taubinick knocks it out for a corner kick. Good play along the end line there for the Polar Bears. Fantastic play. But uh, as I was saying, you know, they've, every guy that comes out of the field of BW has a chance to play, to produce something for the team. You know, the, the perfect example is the freshman, Bryce Pauser and uh, Michael Snowball currently. Both of them very young, but come on and have made a pretty decent impact for BW. So, Schulte bends it toward the middle, still loose. Geither sent it up into the air. Denoy controls it. Good move by Denoy, lays it off into the middle. Still alive. Garbig lets it go, and it's picked up by Pat Nehal. Boy, there were a whole bunch of opportunities there for Ohio Northern. We've played five minutes of scoreless soccer, but the Polar Bears are knocking on the door. Yeah, they are. And as I was saying, um, you know, BW with their players, anybody can step out of the field and potentially make an impact. It doesn't matter, freshman, senior. So... That's one of the things that um, I think Reed has kind of produced for himself because he knows that sometimes just to win games, yeah, you know, you're going to need the experience, but at some point, where do they get the experience? The ball laid off for the corner. Snowball with the left foot into the middle, just over Cannon Dees' head. Ripple squares out, plays it into the middle, and wins a corner. Knocked out by Mac Tompkins. W with their first corner kick here this evening. Kennedy's will take it into the middle and pop free. Dominic racing toward the corner and makes a nice smart move, lets his team's defense reset. Corey Lanes and company have to go pick up the ball in the corner.
throw in coming on the far side. Well, Polar Bears, I think, are kind of holding their shape pretty well on their back line. Yeah, they are. They're, the way they play is they put you know their outside backs go forward, and when I say go forward, I mean they stretch them. I mean, you can see right now that there are two center backs. Their last one's at the 30-yard line, and the next level of the defense is at the 45-yard line on the other side. So that's a pretty decent gap between center backs and outside backs, but that's the way they've played, and it's worked for them in the past years. So good for them for you know keeping sure that that system stays the same and has obviously produced results for them. Well, just from a strategic perspective, it certainly seems to be a more attacking style. You've got more guys pushed forward, so maybe more susceptible to a quick counterattack, but to their credit, they tend to control the midfield pretty well. Yeah, it's a, the way Northern plays is uh, a quote-unquote more modern style of the game. You know, if you look in the professional game, you see outside backs playing as almost wingers all the time, and Oh, and you incorporate that here. A great through ball played in. It turns into a wide shot from Lanes. But a tremendous ball from Bringard all the way ahead. Lanes got his right foot on it, missed the right post. But that's yet another Ohio Northern shot here in the opening eight minutes of this game. Where they seem to be creating things in very tight windows. Yeah, they do. And uh, if you look at you know some of the practices from Ohio Northern or um, just some of the game footage of their previous games, you know, they work on can they play in tight spaces and work their way out of it. And, you know, they do a pretty good job of making sure that those tight spaces seem more open to them. D's looking across. No foul call. First frustrating tackle of the night for BW. By the way, our game time temperature tonight about 47 degrees. It feels like 44 with just a very slight breeze, not too much. And truth be told, because it's not all that windy, it feels a little bit warmer. I don't want to say it feels warm, but maybe it's just, it's less cold outside. It makes a big difference on a night like tonight. That's the Ohio one in you. That's right. <laughs> on the near side, Greg Kayot from his left center back spot. You know, the other thing that's impressed me a lot about Ohio Northern this year, to put together the kind of success they've had this season with a freshman goalie it makes a big difference and it should give the Polar Bears reason to think that they've got something they're building back toward a conference championship contender. Yeah, you know, with a, with a young goalkeeper, it's always a hit or miss. They can be either really good or have a lot of off days. And, um, you know, the keeper here, Dylan Plank, has had very good season for his first year and you know congrats to him and hopefully the polar bears are going to you know hope that he stays with it and has another really good successful three other years so that they can contend for a lot of the tournament stuff this is grant chaos who took that shot about 15 to 20 seconds ago just over 35 minutes left in the first half so in the 10th minute they'll score Tompkins playing along the sideline. Ball goes out of bounds prior to him touching it. Geither, nice move. Looks over to Posner. Trying to get wide around Garbutt. Shuffles it ahead for Rupel. It's cleared free. contact over there before finally the whistle blows and the foul called against Baldwin Wallace. It was Lanes trying to keep possession of it. These touches it softly toward the middle. Osner circling goes back to the middle of his defense. Thank you and Mihal working here. Headed toward an empty spot, BW gets there first. Posner with the right foot toward the back side and a great leaping effort by Dylan Plank to pull the ball out of the air. Snowball was pressuring him a little bit. It's the first time BW's had a really good chance at putting one in the net. 
For a second, I thought Michael was going to score. But he certainly had a good chance. Thirteenth minute. Colin Johnson, center forward, has pulled back a bit. The ball over to Lanes. He beat the back line. Some pressure in the box, and everybody got in the way. Corner kick coming. That was a nice recovery after David Elson originally overcommitted. And Lanes picked up the ball with a free run toward goal. Joe Schulte, you take the uh, corner kick for Ohio Northern. Garvey runs toward the corner. They lay it off to an open spot in the middle. And the low shot cracked wide. J.J. Fortner looking for his team leading 14th goal of the year. One of the top goal scorers across the OAC. The center mid couldn't find the back of the net. No score in the 13th minute. Osner looking for Rupel up the far left side. Good idea, play near side. Touch back over the top of the goal and out of bounds from Snowball. A couple of good ideas though. Yeah, BW's created some decent chances so far and hopefully if they keep creating them, they'll put a few away. It sure looks like they have a chance to most of the time. If they haven't had a chance, it's been quote unquote bad to say that they've created chances. I think probably the best way to say it, their creativity in general, I think has been pretty good. Gotta spread the field and look for some things on the ground, some things over the top. It yeah. certainly doesn't look like a team that's playing with a 1-5-1 and one record in the OAC. Should be playing a little more loose than that tonight. No, I think that uh, BW is kind of taking the chance to use the space that ONU has given them, and you know, they're kind of taking it and running with it. Dees, after a swing and a miss, gives up possession, but only for a moment before Mac Tompkins drew a foul. No booking, but a free kick coming for the Polar Bears. We're in the 15th minute. No score, but Ohio Northern threatening here with Fortner lining up over it. And he's got Mitchell Colvin pressing up a little bit. Tompkins walks away. Fortner on the free kick. Touched by a yellow jacket, still loose. Pinballs around, and finally Taubenick sends it out after his ankle was stepped on. A foul call against Ohio Northern. Well, I didn't see, maybe you caught it better than I did, the original touch that kind of killed the ball right in the middle. It went off a yellow jacket leg. It kind of hung there in suspense for a moment. Yeah, it kind of looked like a clip. Uh, I don't know who is exactly, but it clips on his bottom cleat and kind of just hanging in the middle of the box and almost had a free opportunity for a home weather. Those are scary when they're hanging there in the middle of the box like that. The Jackets dodge another bullet. Ohio Northern has taken five shots here in the first half so far. Although Wallace yet, uh, yet to officially take a shot, but they've had a couple of looks up the field. Two saves for Pat Mihal. Schulte, pressed a little bit by Geither, lost it. Rupel comes up with it, wants to play to Snowball. The one, two, back to Danny Rupel. Good idea looking for Geither streaking in the middle. But the ball got deflected out of bounds. Posner with a left foot. Gets his head on it. And Northern gets it out of harm's way for a moment. Elson back into the middle. It's off Plank's hands. He's able to come up with it anyways. Some great services early in this game from BW's back line. There have been. You know, David Elson's had quite a few. Jay Woodruff, I think, has had one or two. And unfortunately, nobody's been on top of them or in the, you know, in the general vicinity of them. But they've definitely created very good chances that could 
very well become goal scoring opportunities and potentially goals if the right people get on top of it. Ringard sends it ahead. Geither steps in the way. Lots of men forward for Ohio Northern. Garvey touches it ahead and it was mistouched by Colin Johnson. Garvey's tap forward was perfect. It was right on Johnson's foot. Maybe his plant foot wasn't right because as he just kind of swung everything around, he cracked it well wide on what otherwise I thought was a great look. It was a fantastic look. I personally think that you know, he should have hit it more with the inside of his foot, but I mean, you know, in the game of in the swing of the game, things happen. You can't always do what you want to do, but uh, you know, for Garvey, probably one of the most creative players throughout the entire Ohio Northern team in the past decade. So congrats to Garbig for creating that beautiful chance. Unfortunately, just couldn't go their way. Ruppel looking for Snowball. He was pushed off it as Colvin retreated quickly. Osner keeps it alive on the far sideline. 18th minute of the game, no score. Cannon D's for BW. Draws a throw in after a creative move there. Tompkins deflects it out. What do you think so far? I think it's been a pretty even game so far. I mean, the shots may not ne nearly dictate how close it actually has been, but, you know, both BW and ONU have put together chances. D's has a chance here. Laying off for Posner. Backside. Falls to Ripple's feet and he cracks one in the top left corner. Danny Ripple's 19th of the year puts BW on the board, 1 0. Big goal for the Yellow Jacket sophomore who continues to extend his school record, now 19 goals on the year. I wish we had a replay. The most important, or I should say the most impressive part of that, in my opinion, was maybe that it uh, fell off one of his teammates' forehead right to his feet. I think it was Geither, but I kind of lost it as I was following the ball. Just a, uh, a great finish from Ruppel. He is so talented as Fortner looks for an opening to let one go himself. Yeah, you know, Ruppel creating 19 goals for himself. Tompkins, this is Johnson. BW does a good job staying with the play, not giving up on it. But with, with Danny's 19 goals, you know, it, he keeps going no matter what. And that's one of the best things about him as a person. And honestly, I don't know how in the earth he shattered it like he did. But, <laughs> you know, we talked about things not going their way earlier in the season with the goals scoring for results, but you know, sometimes the games that don't feel like they are going your way tend to. The corner kick did not manifest itself. By the way, it was indeed Geither on the assist on that goal. Snowball played one across, hit Geither in the forehead, and it kind of like stunned him and dead in the ball and fell right to Danny's feet. And he put it in the top left. It's a great goal. 21 minutes in, Baldwin Wallace on top, 1 nothing. Their problem has actually been holding on to leads. It's not that they haven't had opportunities to play from out front. They haven't necessarily always been chasing the game. I mean, for example, playing against a Heidelberg team that's ranked in the top 25 in the country, and truth be told, I think most, uh, most on the Yellow Jackets will tell you it felt like a really Good game in BW's favor. They got off to a good start. And then all of a sudden, things tilted quickly the other way. I mean, Baldwin Wallace was tied 1-1, closing in on halftime. And then all of a sudden, things fell apart. They lost the game 6-2. Johnson lost control of it with Guy through there. But to lose a game 6-2 when you outshoot your opponent 14-13, 
And those are the kinds of games that are that have been tough to swallow for BW. When you when you outshoot your opponent, you don't expect to lose by four. No, you don't. But I mean, realistically, you know, think you can have a lot of shots and they just play don't go your way. You can have a lot of them that go over, go wide. You can even have a lot of good shots that look like they could go in the back of the net on an ordinary keeper, and all of a sudden, Heidelberg's keeper was making fantastic saves. And remember that in that game last week here at home, the second of BW's goals was actually scored <coughs> in the 90th minute. Plank, looking around. Halfway through our opening frame, Andy Rupel put the Jackets on top, 1-0. BW has been eliminated from postseason play in the OAC, but Ohio Northern is still trying to qualify for the tournament. They are likely tournament bound, but a win tonight would really help their case. Shipped over the top looking for Denoy, but it was not quite enough. Rupel heads over to Posner. Rice on a dead sprint, trying to get there. And he was the last to touch it out of bounds, so throw in coming for Mac Tompkins. right now Ohio Northern winning in most categories but it's BW that leads 1-0 in the 24th minute yeah you know you talk about ONU having more shots but personally in my opinion I think that um, it's more or less the quality of the shot you know they have had a lot of shots but quite a few of them have been wide or off target or right at Pat Hall's hands and I mean, BW hasn't had that many shots, but um, the quality of the chances they're taking are definitely higher because, it's, I mean, it shows. They definitely well, have, have only taken one shot so far. And it's been a quality <laughs> went shot. The, went into the net. You get the sense that Ohio Northern is closing in on something. They have been the aggressor all game. Fortner with a nice ball laid off. Johnson looking for just a small crease. He lost it at the top of the 18. Rubel beats the back line, plays it off for Snowball. Michael tried to strike it. He was caught from behind. Instead, Cannon D's looking for that left side and Dylan Plank pulls it in. It's a pretty confident Baldwin-Wallace team right now. They seem to be playing loose. I think they've definitely been playing more calm and more in tune with things than they have in previous games. You know, they've played well in previous games, but I think this game has really shown that they're kind of making a statement, yeah, we're comfortable to be on the ball, and we're, we're not afraid to go at you when we get it either. Well, I don't know they're waiting to... Bring three new faces on. First, a shot from Denoy. It's picked up. John Sternusty, Tim Hoffman, and Zachary Yoder all waiting to check in. Just under 20 minutes to go in the first half. One nothing Yellow Jackets on Danny Ruppel's 19th of the year. <clears throat> guard pressing ahead, and his lob toward the corner didn't really have much on it. And 
see too much of Jeremy Faust tonight. Seems to be playing a more defensive role this evening, kind of trying to hang back a little bit and help solidify that uh, big polar bear press offensively. Yeah, and I think that's part of the game plan for the Yellow you know, Jackets is, you know, it's, it, I feel like it's almost more counterattacking based. I mean, obviously the goal wasn't from a counterattack, but, you know, they've played kind of on the heel of things, and I mean, it's done them done them well because they haven't given up anything, and they've won a lot of balls that have come in their back, back third, but um, I do think Jeremy has kind of been given the position of, hey, we want you to sit back more. Allison in the corner. Jackets touch that one out of bounds, and here come those fresh three faces. Again, John Sternusty, Tim Hoffman, and Zach Yoder have all come on. trying to press back and help out defensively a little bit. Okay, nice job firming his body up. Posner, eyes forward. Great ball for Snowball, but he just couldn't keep it close enough to him. He needed just a little bit less on the touch, but you know, could, I mean, he's, he's playing well, so you know, Snowball, I'm sure we're going to see Great things out of him tonight, and maybe even if luck goes his way, a goal. 17 minutes left in the first half. W up by one. Allison denies an opening there. Zach Yoder. Hmm. Looks like they called a late foul. So how Northern has a free kick. And that's definitely not a spot that they wanted. It's very close to a goal scoring opportunity right here. Center back Grant Kayot will take it. Try to use his left foot to swing it in. It's a low kick. And now a corner kick. Schulte's replacement, Tim Hoffman, will go take the corner kick. He's a sophomore from Strongsville, just up the road. Hoffman lays it off. This is Fortner. And he's played off the ball, and it creates a quick counter. Geither, Rupel, and Dees. Pass for Kennedy's will be just a touch offline. And Northern survives the quick rush. Half an hour gone. 15 minutes to play here in the opening half. If you joined us late alongside Kyle Klimo, I'm Brendan Gulick. Glad to have you on board here this evening. Posner with his left foot played it too far behind Snowball. He circles around but cannot keep it in balance. Definitely a good idea from Posner, but I think he's going to play that ball. It's got to be just a tad earlier. I mean, I know that touch was a little far ahead of him, and I mean, congrats to him for even thinking of the idea because I honestly thought he was going to play Cannon. I thought he was going to take a shot. Well, he kind of lined up. Whatever the case, maybe he just got caught in between. The Jackets have to reset. Olin Wallace has essentially eight guys playing within uh, 10 vertical yards of each other and stretching across the entire field with only Rupel and Snowball pressed ahead here. And now they re-earn possession and try to counter. Faust in the middle. Nice job by Kayak coming over and Deflecting it. 
the Dylan Plank sends it ahead. Thirty-sixth minute. Alton Wallace on top, one nothing. BW. Cool temperatures, but not particularly breezy here in late October. Still could be a tad warmer. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Be kind of spoiled with a warm fall, to be honest. They had to play too many games in cool temperatures. Or even some guys on the field who have chosen to not wear long sleeves. Fortner taps it ahead. Johnson was trying to come after it. Tauben had cut him off. And there's a foul call behind the play, <coughs> so they'll reset for a free kick. 12.37 left in the first half and counting. And the free kick will be taken by Grant Kaya. Caught a big break. That looked like a sure goal from Corey Lanes. He just couldn't redirect it toward the frame. Jackets are being outshot eight to two, but they lead one nothing with under 12 minutes to go in the first half. You know, and how Northern's had a lot of set pieces, but at the same time, they've kind of done the same thing over and over again. It kind of makes me wonder, you know, when are they going to switch it up? Because it obviously hasn't been working for them. Well, it hasn't worked in terms of putting the ball in the goal. But they've certainly had some open looks because of it. I mean, they've had a lot of open looks, but I mean, if you're going to keep running the same play over and over again, at some point, either is going to finally figure it out or it's got to go in the back of the net. And, I mean, you know, they only had a few set pieces, but I think at some point, you know, maybe alternate a little bit. And Bad turnover here. I mean, to cut you off, but Ruppel's on the run. You never know when he could put one in. He's got a chance! And it was just a little wide left, but dove on quickly by Dylan Plank. But I mean, as I was saying, you know, the Hound Brothers are very good at what they do. The free kicks generally are very good free kicks. Just tonight, I wonder if they're a little bit off. Well, to your point, the definition of insanity is trying the same thing repeatedly and <laughs> expecting different results. And maybe they're hoping that the one will go over the back of the net before the end of the night. I was going to say, I, I think there is some subjectivity, though. In in the way they've uh, played those balls in. I mean, they've had some success in getting open looks. Fortner is here. He's got Geither on his heels, and he whacks one right at Pat Meehal. That's a great save after some good creative footwork from J.J. Fortner. Meehal and the Yellow Jackets send it away with 10-17 in counting here in our first half. Alan Johnson. He caught a little bit of the turf along with the ball at that point. BW is looking for just their second win in conference. So far, the only win against an OAC foe came at Muskingum. They've also tied one game that was a 3 3 game against Wilmington. Their conference games at home have been unkind results. I think that tonight will be different. Lanes was playing up the left side after a couple of substitutions had forced him to switch. Rafael Davalos waiting to check in. Along with Cole McDaniel. Yeah. 
shot, trying to work around Rupel. Good job by Tobinek. And now Davalos and McDaniel over and talk with Breed Ayers as this one is smoked into the top of the goal. Ohio Northern ties it at one apiece on freshman Zachary Yoder's rocket to the back of the frame. Yoder puts in his third of the year and it was a no doubt about it smash. 8.40 left in the first half. and McDaniel both check in. Substitutions for Ohio Northern as well. They bring Bilal Hassan, a freshman, into the game. He's listed as a defender, but it looks like he's actually going to play at center forward. Fortner's pressing ahead, along with Lanes. It looks like they'll play the top three spots offensively. So on that far right side, they've got Tim Hoffman pressing up too. Ohio Northern with some momentum. Hoffman. Plays it back to Kaya. With the left foot, Kaya forces a dive, but it's successfully stopped by Pat Mihal. How did you see things break down on Yoder's goal? I think that Yoder kind of made himself open with a nice little run of space, and you know the ball kind of fell perfectly to him, and he took a beautiful touch, and in all honesty, he smashed it, and you know the placement was unbelievable. I mean, to chip a keeper from that far out, and Pat made a great effort to make the save, just he couldn't get onto it. And you know, congrats to Yoder for scoring a beautiful goal, and you know it, it almost makes me wonder. If it was when it was going to happen, not a not a question of if, but kind of when, because they've kind of put or O and U's kind of put BW on their heels the entire night, and you know, things obviously haven't gone O and U's way in terms of uh, goal conversion. But you know, at some point it was going to happen. And well, that's kind of where my my point was at earlier with you know the the free kicks where you had mentioned that maybe they were trying the same thing too frequently. I think the fact was they were getting open looks, they just weren't scoring them. And when you get a game where you have open shots, at some point you got to trust your guys that they're good enough they can put the ball in the goal. Northern's done that here fairly late in the first half. Working on another one, but D's got his foot just in time in Mac Thompson, uh, Tom, Tompkins' way. That one played ahead and accidentally back heeled by Sternusty. But it works out for the Polar Bears' favor. That ball goes back to BW. 6.15 left in the first half. All knotted up at one. With Ohio Northern out shooting BW 11-3. to three. Faust on the far side. Trying to play back to him and Jeremy cut off his run. So ball trying to keep the ball in the middle. Hoffman Knocked it off of a yellow jacket out of bounds. Ohio Northern has dominated possession in this game, and BW's best chances have come when they are basically in a full-on counter mode. Hopefully the addition of both Davalos and McDaniel here late in this first half can maybe slow down Ohio Northern a little bit. Avalos tries and gets on Hassan's case. Tap to the middle. Tominek with a good play to sneak it away from Yoder. Davalos. Rupel on the bench at the moment looking for Geither ahead. And a goal kick. You know, it kind of surprises me right now with Ohio Northern that they're not playing more through garbage. 
You know, Garbic has been such a big impact for them this entire season, and he almost seems non-existent tonight. I wonder if he's having a bad day, or if, you know, if BW is personally man-marking him to make sure that he doesn't get the ball, but I mean, from what I've seen, I don't think he's touched the ball more than, you know, four or five times. He definitely hasn't played the impact that I think we kind of expected. Polar Bears are showing off their depth a little tonight with other guys taking good looks on net. By the way, Logan Davis has checked in for Baldwin Wallace, playing with a uh, left knee injury, but able to work his way through it and still out there competing. Four minutes remaining, so we're at the, the uh, 41 minute mark in our first half. Danny Ruppel scored for Baldwin Wallace in the 19th minute to make it 1 0. But Zachary Yoder in the 37th minute tied it at one apiece. BW free kick coming. Tobinick. Kind of a low line drive kick toward the top of the 18. Defended fairly easily. Meanwhile, Bilal Hassan outrunning Faust up the pitch. Back to Lanes. Garbing in a little space. Once more to Corey Lanes. Wants to use his left foot. A great centering pass, but a better job by Bowen Wallace. Sliding in the way it was Logan Davis that knocked it out of bounds. Actually, I beg your pardon, not Davis, but Snowball that knocked it away. Garrett McHugh there too. Two and a half minutes to go in our first half. Or a kick played into the middle. Woodruff found it at his feet. Tompkins eludes Davis. Lays a great ball for the corner. And Hassan tripped as he tried to touch it in. Less than two minutes to go in the first half. Good look here for Ohio Northern. The back line solidifies just in the nick of time. Davalos ahead for Geither on a long run to the net. Geither toward the middle. Ripped with the left foot just over the top. A goal kick coming off of Cole McDaniel's miss. 115 and counting. It's a pretty good shot. It was a great look. Meanwhile, Snowball checks out of the game. And Baldwin Wallace brings a new face in. It's freshman Jacob Ray. Another young guy who's a defender by nature, but looks like he'll play in a slightly more offensive role here in the final minute and a half. Lanes, can't find a passing lane. Oh boy, the Yellow Jackets are playing defense as a team tonight. Working very uh, well cohesively. Under 30 seconds to go in the first half. Yeah. Tied at one. Yeah, you know, they've played very well defensively. Um, the one goal obviously is a little unfortunate, but you couldn't do anything about it. And, you know, you talked about Fred, you know, Jacob Ray coming out and being a new face. And, you know, and he may not be a you know, forward by nature, but that's the thing with BW. It doesn't matter what position you say you are, you might play a different one. <laughs> you play all over the field for Reed Ayers. Well, I imagine Reed is probably pleased with his group's efforts so far. They've been outshot 11-4 to in this first half. But the Yellow Jackets have competed at a high level, played great defense. 
And uh, except for conceding one really nice goal by Zach Yoder, the Jackets and Polar Bears are tied at one apiece. Alden Wallace has made five saves on 11 shots, six of which were on goal. BW has taken four shots, three on goal, two saves for Dylan Plank. No offsides calls in the game. Five corner kicks for Ohio Northern, only one for BW in the early going. And each team is uh, low single digits in terms of fouls. Three for Ohio Northern, four for the Yellow Jackets. So both teams will try to warm up a little bit on a uh, fairly cool but not necessarily cold night. And uh, they'll head toward the halftime locker room. We'll come back in about 15 minutes when the second half begins. It's Ohio Northern 1 and Baldwin Wallace 1 at BWYellowJackets.com.
Brendan Gulick and Kyle Klimo back with you for the second half of Ohio Northern and Baldwin Wallace tonight. It's a 1-1 uh, tie in a game that on paper probably favored Ohio Northern, but the Yellow Jackets tonight I think have played maybe one of their best stretches of 45 minutes all year. Granted, they gave up a goal. It was a well-earned goal. It wasn't necessarily a defensive breakdown. Ohio Northern's just good at creating, and I think you give them credit for the one they put in. But it's about Baldwin Wallace finding a way to string together another really solid 45 minutes to earn a victory at home against a pretty good team. Yeah, you know, Baldwin Wallace in the past games have had a few. You know, they defended pretty well and played really well for 40 out of the 45 minutes in the first half. And for those five minutes they turned off, you know, they let goals in. And it's kind of been the exact opposite here where they've been in tune for the entire 45. And, you know, unfortunately they did concede a goal, but, I mean... You know, they've definitely done what they were asked to do in terms of, you know, Reed asking them to play very consistent soccer. Second half underway as Baldwin Wallace changes direction. They go from right to left. And uh, we'll have to defend the goal off to their right hand side. Tobinick, McHugh, Elson, and Woodruff still back there as the back line with Posner, Snowball, Faust. Geither, Dees, and Rupel rounding out the midfield and forward spots. Pat Nihal still in goal. That is the starting lineup, or I should say the starting 11 for BW. Meanwhile, Bringard, Kayot, Colvin, and Tompkins remain in the back line with Dylan Plank in goal. And it looks like Garbig, Fortner, and Schulte are still out there in the midfield with Denoy, Johnson, and Lanes as your uh, options on the attack. Northern scored in the, uh, oh, let's say, I guess it was the 37th minute. I'm to think about it. It was late, uh, getting late in the first half. 37th minute to tie it up after BW put one in in the 19th. At times, some good balance. Kyle, I know you've been maybe a little bit um, discouraged by the number of shots that Ohio Northern has put on goal, though you think that maybe some of them are not high quality looks. Here's some great footwork there at the top of the 18. I'll let you go on that in just a second. Fortner feeds it near side. Corey Lanes with the right foot into the middle, still alive. Johnson trying to get his feet on it. He turns around and committed the foul himself. Yeah, you, know, you talk about how I mean, I personally don't think that their shot, their their looks have been bad. It's just the the goal opportunities, the shots they're putting on frame, haven't been as consistent as we've seen, you know, in another game for ONU. And I think it's really hurting them, and it kind of turns into what I like to call "quote unquote" lower quality shots because you know high quality shots you're putting consistently on frame. ONU has kind of had a lot of drought lately with putting the ball on frame. They've kind of had, you know, and it makes 12 shots currently, and I think only six have been on, on goal. So, you know, in, in previous games they've had more shots on goal where it's been a very high percentage shot on goal and very high percentage opportunity to score, but in this game it seems like they've kind of turned off a little bit with that and kind of just, I don't know, it seems a little lackadaisical from the shot in terms of percentage of shooting and how qualitative it is. Okay. We'll keep our eye on that as Johnson lays it to the far side, looking forward to Denoy. And the ball across the sideline for a Yellow Jacket throw in. Chance for Fortner. Kennedy's pulls it off of Fortner's foot. Good one two touch to Geither, but couldn't keep it close. Now it's Colvin racing up the middle. Holding off Geither, gets the ball back. Colvin still on it. Finally, it's out of harm's way. About four minutes into the second half of a 1-1 game. 
Ohio Northern coming in 11, five and one overall. They are four and three in conference. And they have not yet locked up an Ohio Athletic Conference tournament bid. They really need to win tonight to help solidify an OAC tournament appearance. I think it is probable that they'll go to the conference tournament. They're not guaranteed a spot yet. Pass from Dees to Snowball didn't have much on it. Forces Taubanek ahead. Elson gave it away. Fortner right foots it into the defense. Tapped free by Woodruff. Geither tries to slice his way around the ball. And the whistle's blown. In the 50th minute, 1-1 one, one affair. Q. Let's it rip. And Dees deflects it off his chest right to Dylan Plank. Snowball and Rupel applying some pressure. Northern passes out of it. Bring guard up to Kayot. Rupel being a pest at midfield and a turnover cause. Nice work by Jeremy Faust. Rupel chips it over toward Faust. Snowball with the right foot and he got around the wrong side of the ball, slicing it away for a goal kick. Yeah, and the one thing I love about Danny is, while he may be a natural forward, if there's an opportunity for him to win the ball back, even if he's got to sprint backwards, he's going for it. And his, his speed is unbelievable. I don't know if anybody could actually pull off getting away with the ball from him because he's just so persistent and just the pace that it comes at you is just kind of frightening. Well, in a lot of ways, Rupel right now is perhaps where most other freshmen start. Danny was uh, a year younger than most other freshmen after he skipped a grade in elementary school. He's come out by uh, Pat Mehal. So I mean, Danny, I mean, he started last year as a 17-year-old. Yeah. He, he won't turn 21 until he's a senior. And in some regard, look, I mean, I, I think it goes to show that he's capable of playing against guys that are older than him. But there's a big difference between a 17-year-old and a 19-year-old in terms of their uh, athletic maturity, both physically and, and certainly mentally. And it's not that he's not capable of playing at this level. He's obviously excelled on yeah. the field. But I think we're starting to see Danny a little bit more physical this year and holding his ground. And he's understanding the game in uh, a little bit better way. Yeah, and I think, you know, he, he did have a good understanding last year. Schulte looking to tap it ahead for Johnson, but Pat Mehal came and got it. But I think, Dan I mean, Danny has always had a very high, what we call soccer IQ. He's very, had a very high knowledge of the game, even as a young player. Um, I played against Danny many years before, and you know he's always been that kind of player where he's very intelligent. And I think it's really starting to show up more now in terms that he's flourishing with it. Snowball with a chance. That's a corner kick. Dylan Plank tried to make the diving stop when the ball was wide of the net. And Plank couldn't keep it inside his grab. Cannon Dees to take the corner kick. Blasts it to the middle of the box, but Dylan Plank with the arms up goes and gets it. Second half is about nine minutes old. Baldwin Wallace tied at one with Ohio Northern. Woodruff heads it down to Snowball. Touch to Rupel. With the right foot looking for Dees. And the 
it didn't manifest into much offensively. Snowball couldn't keep it. Well, he's trying to recover as Ohio Northern flips the field. Lanes holds off Elson. Having trouble turning the ball forward though. Now he breaks free. Lanes against Faust. And maybe held it a little too long, although the ball checked up. Loose in the box, and Mihal dove on it. And some Yellow Jacket fans holding their breath. Into the 56th minute of a 1-1 tie, Ohio Northern and BW have played a pretty even second half so far. Neither team has really made much, uh, much of a, a tough effort. Some pressure. Danny Rupel tried to tap it back to Snowball, but not enough pace on it. Jeremy Faust with his eyes ahead. Snowball being forced to the left. Cannon Dees had it for just a split second with that window in the middle. And he dribbled instead of shooting it. Both teams are meticulous right now in their passing. That one was cracked right into Schulte. He's going to feel that one. <laughs> Here comes Posner. Great tackle in the open field by Garvin. That was maybe not quite as strong a tackle. And a free kick for the Yellow Jackets. How do you see the second half uh, kind of unfolding so far? So far, I think it's been pretty even. Um, I think it's going to go over the same way. You know, BW, we talked about having a quote unquote, how do I want to put this? Lackluster of defense where they've had a lot of defensive breakdowns. Uh, you know, and part of that's been from the fact that Gary McHugh's been injured and, you know, he's back tonight and pretty healthy. And I think it's shown that, you know, he's a force to be reckoned with that helps with the back line. And I think if they keep him in and, you know, he plays as consistently as he is right now, BW has a very good chance to tie this game, if not winning this game. Well, Faust takes a really good look from outside the 18. But he, much like Snowball earlier, came across the ball the wrong way and sliced it out of, uh, well, out of reach of the net. Corey Lanes is going to check out here. Anthony Denoy switching sides of the field. And Hoffman back out there to go play the uh, left uh, attacking forward spot. Bringard lays it over. Coleman just couldn't keep it away. Good work rate from Michael Snowball. And it's a polar bear throw in on a cold night. Colin Johnson, left foots it, just wide left. Great look, Mihal with a diving stop. Ball goes, or I should say diving effort, and the ball goes wide left of the post for a goal kick.
right there tackled from behind, and that's a whistle for sure. Johnson looked at the official and said, hey, didn't mean to do that. Let's try and keep himself out of the cautionary book. Nobody wants to be in that book. Not a good book to be in. <laughs> out of bounds on the far side for a polar bear throw in. Meanwhile, Ohio Northern makes a sell. And they have brought on the young man who scored in the first half, Zachary Yoder. And he takes Joe Schulte's spot. Played behind Yoder toward Denoy. Yoder runs it down on the deflection. BW throws it. Great move by Snowball. Bumped off the ball, but it falls to Danny Rupel. And on the little tapper back to Posner, he deposits it well over the top of the bar. Plank and Kayot all working together in the back with everybody else pressed forward. Ringard again just making Rupel race around. He'll try the left side. Hoffman. Trying to get past Faust. Left foots it over the bar out of bounds for a goal kick. And Ohio Northern brings on a sub. This time it's Coleman that leaves. And he's replaced by John Sternusty, sophomore from Revere High School in Akron. Sixty-second minute. Ohio Northern and BW tied at one with both goals coming in the first half. Polar Bears tied their first game of the year 1-1 at Grove City. But their last 16 games, they've either won or lost. Great work by Posner. Still has a chance to keep the ball before finally being bumped off. Dominic. Geither, Cannon Dees. Dees near the 18, and he is pushed down with a foul on Ohio Northern. The foul comes outside the top of the box, so it's not a penalty kick. At least I didn't think so. Danny Ruppel is trying to argue that maybe they should put it at the spot. <laughs> I think that would have been a tough argument. That's definitely a foul outside the top of the 18. I don't blame him for trying, though. It also makes you wonder, though, where is he actually calling the foul? Because from my, from our point of view, it almost looks like Cannon got fouled at the top of the 18. And well, you're right, and they put this ball you know, 25 yards out. Dees takes the free kick. It goes right into the wall. It finds Ruppel's feet. Ohio Northern's defense holds. A couple of new faces for Reed Ayers' group waiting to check in far side. Everybody with jackets on and several with pants on on the far side trying to stay as warm as possible while they're not out running on the field. 64th minute. Ohio Northern trying to break the 1-1 tie. Sternusty. Denoy loses it. A 
Hobbinick just kind of kicked a clunker up into the air. That was not his best clear. for Mac Tompkins. And now the clock stops and the yellow card's coming out. I think that was a case of the official just saying, okay, I've had enough. Yeah, it makes you wonder. I mean, Mac Tompkins only had, I think that's actually his first foul of the game. I don't think he's actually committed any other fouls tonight and I find it kind of interesting that his first foul, he's getting yellow carded. We'll get some verification on who that uh, yellow card is on, but it certainly looked like it was on Mac Tompkins. Coming in the 66th minute. Bears to throw in. <coughs> Tompkins just picked up his second yellow card of the year. Nobody for Ohio Northern has more than two. Garbig, Johnson, and Plank all have two yellow cards. Meanwhile, Jacob Ray and Cole McDaniel come back in, as does Ryan Hassel. Great to see him back out there. He's it kind of hit or miss this season, battling some injuries. When he's available, he's one of BW's best weapons on the attack. It's great to have him back playing at a central forward spot. Ray plays it over to Hassel. Back heels it. Posner splits the defense. Geither with some help will rock it into the top corner. Onto the field and into the scoring column. Cole McDaniel makes it two to one. himself to look like it's not a very good look and lays it off and congrats to Cole McDaniel for scoring a one-time finish to go in the back of the corner of the net. That ball was smoked in the top left corner. Cole McDaniel, his first goal of the season. Yeah, Cole McDaniel makes it 2-1 Baldwin Wallace. Cole, uh, a sophomore who, again, literally just checked into the game Played some in the first half, and he's definitely got that kind of ability. But rather quickly found the ball at his feet, and he perfectly struck it over Dylan Plank's outstretched arms. And so Ohio Northern may be a little nervous here on the road. Down 2-1. to one. And remember, they really need to pick up at least a win or draw to help solidify their spot in the OAC tournament next week. That's a tournament that Baldwin Wallace has already been eliminated from. Top six teams in the conference get in. Otterbein has clinched the regular season title. They are currently 8-0. John Carroll 5-2, the reigning conference champions. Otterbein and John Carroll, two of the top uh, 25 teams in the country. Mountain Union at 4-2-1. They are tournament bound. But Ohio Northern, Marietta, Capital and Heidelberg are all fighting for those last three spots. Well, they're certainly in good shape, but a loss tonight, they would need some help from other teams in order to qualify this evening. Ringard taps it ahead. The second half has been a lot less offensive for Ohio Northern than they were in the first 45 minutes. 
They've only taken one shot in the first 24 minutes of this second half. Meanwhile, BW has put six shots together and they take the, uh, take the lead. You mentioned Joey Geither on the assist. That's his second assist of the night. But Cole McDaniel puts BW out front. Yeah, and you know, it kept with uh, you know, ONU being potentially playoff bound, if they lose tonight and things don't go their way, it kind of makes you wonder uh, what the coaches are kind of thinking. You know, for the past decade, ONU's been one of those uh, colleges that's been to the, at least to the tournament every year for the past decade. I mean, so for, you know, their coach, it kind of makes me wonder what he's thinking if they, pull off, if they can't pull it off tonight and they don't go to the tournament. Well, Brett Ridenauer is not just the winningest coach in school history. He's the winningest men's soccer coach in conference history. And you can bet he, uh, he's got a pretty good pulse on the way his team is playing, and he knows that he lost some big pieces from a year ago. But this is a year still about growth for them, and he's hoping his team can at least get through the conference tournament and have a chance to play some meaningful games and keep growing. I'm not convinced Ohio Northern can't make a run in the OAC tournament. If they, uh, if they get in and play well, they're still very much in the mix for a home game. They can finish in that fourth seed. But they need a little bit of help, and a loss or a draw tonight might not put them in quite as good a shape. Jacob Ray on the receiving end of that long pass. Instead, the other way now. Yeah, there's no doubt that Owen, you can you know, compete at the, the tournament, but they don't really look to be competing as well as they usually do tonight. You know, usually they're putting teams on their back foot the entire night, and it just hasn't been that way today. Denoy can't get off a shot, so he lays it into the middle of the box where the jackets cleared away. Kayat. Now Fortner, and Geithers there. All this without Rupel on the field, one of the top goal scorers in the country. Perhaps a chance here, crossed into the middle of the box just over Denoy's head. Run down though by Sternusty, and he rips one wide left. Boy, Ohio Northern had two great chances to tie up the game and could not convert on either one. But they've got a corner kick coming and the Polar Bears bring two new faces out there. They're bringing Joe Schulte and Corey Lanes back on the pitch here for the tail end. 18-20 left in regulation. Polar Bears looking for a game time strike. And they almost had it. Zachary Yoder's header deflected off of Pat Meehal. And then all of a sudden, Meehal found the ball right back at his feet. And he was able to dive on top of it. Sometimes you just need a little bit of luck in your life. BW has been on the wrong side of that way too often this year. They are hoping for uh, Lady Luck to be a yellow jacket tonight. It certainly has been so far. Off of Ray out of bounds. You know, I joke about Pat needing the luck there, but Pat's done a very good job tonight with making sure that any ball that comes into the box is almost entirely his every time. I mean, there's been a few where he hasn't been able to come out to get them, and therefore they haven't been his, but when they've been near him, I mean, Owen U's gotten only, I think, two headers in the in the box when, he's, when they're near Pat, so... Passed on his job today, for sure. There were five games in the conference today. Three of them have already gone final. As Ohio Northern tries to make something happen here. Now the official blows the whistle because the offside flag went up. Wilmington beat Muskingum today 4-2. to two. Capital beat Heidelberg 3-2. to two. 
and Otterbein, who'd already clinched the top spot, knocked off Marietta three to nothing. The only other active game in the OAC is John Carroll two, Mount Union nothing, and that's in the 57th minute. So an updated live look at the standings in just a moment as Ryan Hassel rips one over the top of the bar. As it currently stands, Otterbein 8-0 in first place. John Carroll is playing Mount Union. The Blue Streaks at 5-2 are in second place with Mount Union at 4-2-1 in third place. Ohio Northern is 4-3, they're in fourth place. Marietta lost tonight, so they're 4-3-1. Capital 4-3-1 uh, because they won. Fortner lost it. Still in harm's way. Wilmington, BW, and Muskingum have all been eliminated from the tournament already. Still alive? Great save! Mehal deflects away a tying goal. What an effort. Fortner in the corner. Mehal out to it. The ball pulled him out of the way, but Northern could not tuck it in behind him. The Polar Bears feel a little snake bit. Kayot races around Hassel with now just under 15 minutes remaining. Posner hits it out. Hassel wants McDaniel to race after it. the ball. Schulte came to it. And BW hits it out. An Ohio Northern loss tonight would drop them to four and four, which means at worst they would be in sixth place at the end of the night. At absolute worst. And sixth place is still good enough to get you in the tournament. So a loss tonight does not eliminate them from the OAC tournament. One definitely helps though. With that left foot from a long way away, McDaniel put it right on net. A win tonight for Ohio Northern puts them at five and three. And at five and three, that would actually guarantee them a tournament spot. They would be in. Because the worst they could do is five and four. And there are already four teams in the conference with four losses. And they have a tiebreaker to put them in the tournament. Jeremy Faust across midfield, four on four, and he lays it to McDaniel. Contact at the top of the box. This one's rolled into a dangerous spot and nearly tied up. Yoder right on the doorstep of the six yard box. Couldn't put it in. Ohio Northern can't strike as BW literally dodges another bullet. Yeah, you know, Jeremy Faust was in the back there and it kind of makes you think that he's been, I mean, it makes you realize that he's been such a big asset in the back. You know, he was gassed from going or from chasing down on the top and... This one's loose in front. Mihal punches it away. You know, Faust couldn't get back and it almost hurt the Yellow Jackets that he couldn't get back. Played in on the hop and Tobinek steps in. 12 minutes to go in the game. BW leads two to one. Can they add on another goal? Osner tried a no-look pass to Hassel, but it deflected off a center back. Faust tackled in the open field, no foul call. BW keeps it with the advantage. And Ohio Northern grabs possession back. 
Nice job by Geither. He is in consideration for our player of the game with two really good assists tonight. Under 12 minutes to go. Looking for Posner in the middle. He didn't get it. And one of the Yellow Jackets is sitting down. I believe it's Jeremy Faust. Can't tell if he's cramping up or if he's a little winded. He's starting to play with his right shoelace. And now the officials stop the clock with 11.05, although it continues to wind, even though they've whistled for a stoppage. Yeah, Jeremy Faust has got to be you know, gassed. He's had a, a very, very long day of you know, running between I mean, end -line, end line essentially. He's had a long, long day, and I'm sure that he's probably feeling it in his body. And you know, the Yellow Jacks are going to be hopeful or hoping that he can come back pretty soon because, boy, has he helped them out tonight. BW in good position, but they're looking for their first win against Ohio Northern since 2014. Trying to redeem a couple losses the last two years, including a 7 1 defeat last year. Looks like the officials may put a little time back on the clock. That wouldn't surprise me because they ran uh, at least six or seven seconds off of the clock after the ref had asked for uh, for time to stop. Might take a second here, but I, I would think they'll put a little time back on. So while they get that all straightened out, W is trying to line up a corner kick that they can put in the back of the net. That would make, uh, make it an awfully steep climb. They put 12 seconds back on. It's up to 11-11 left in the game. On the high arcing corner. W couldn't get a clean look off. They still have the ball. Osner looking for Hassel. Now Logan Davis gets into the action. Garbig with a long look up. J.J. Fortner racing after it. He almost got there. Denoy recovers after overrunning it. And Garbig retreats. The other thing that Ohio Northern is playing for after one of the Yellow Jackets goes down, that's Logan Davis in the midfield. He's holding his left shoulder laying on the ground, but play continues until Ohio Northern loses the ball here. Porter touches ahead. And I think we've got a, well, we certainly have a you know, clock stopping at 9.59. I think the Yellow Jackets may have touched the ball in the box. You know, I don't know. I think, it, to me, it's almost sounded like the ref blew the whistle when Logan Davis went down. And I think it kind of caught a lot of Yellow Jackets off guard. Uh, because, you know, when you hear that whistle, I mean, at least I felt like I heard it. Um, you know, so I, I saw a couple Yellow Jackets kind of stop and, you know, hope hope that their player is okay. And then all of a sudden they see that, you know, how Northern continues playing. And it's almost like the Yellow Jackets is a wake-up call. Just under 10 minutes to go. BW on top, 2-1. To and Logan Davis is being attended to on the field by the athletic training staff. To continue our thought, the other thing Ohio Northern is playing for tonight, they are hoping to not be the 4 or 5 seed that would have to run into Otterbein in the first, uh, in, or I should say in the semifinals of the tournament. They could avoid the top seed. They technically could still be as high as 2 in the tournament if things were to fall the right way. And the way that John Carroll and Mount Union is shaking out tonight, John Carroll has a 2-0 lead in the second half. Perhaps it is most likely that John Carroll would win that game. We'll give you an update from that in just a moment. But if they do, that means Mount Union loses, right? Mount Union could fall to 4-3-1. and one. An Ohio Northern win tonight could go to 5-3, and three, and then Ohio Northern goes to the three spot. So there really is a lot at stake in terms of positioning 
the uh, polar bears have a lot uh, a lot to be decided here in the final week of the regular season that they're doing you know they know it bw knows it and on is definitely fighting for that for that win tonight if nothing else they want to get a tie by the no. way it's now three nothing john carroll in the 82nd minute uh, over in university heights john carroll ranked 15th in the country by d3soccer.com They've had a really good season, but they lost twice in conference play, losing to both Otterbein and to Heidelberg. Both were pretty competitive games. They're the only two losses the Blue Streaks have suffered all year. John Carroll, the reigning OAC champion, and, and by uh, many people's pick, they uh, probably were the favorite to win the conference this year. Otterbein's proven to be a really good team. But the problem here is play will resume in a moment, is that Ohio Northern has a chance to Equalize things on a penalty. J.J. Fortner against Pat Mehal. And we're tied at two. So the Yellow Jackets were indeed called for an illegal handball in the top of the box. And the uh, penalty gives Ohio Northern a chance to pull even. Now for BW, this is where you got to see this team try and step up here. Ten minutes to go. They've been dealing with some adversity like this all season long. And they take matters into their own hands with some fresh legs back on the field. And Dees, Rupel, Davalos, and Snowball. Quickly on the attack. Snowball in the middle. Went off his foot, then off a defender. They you talk about PW trying to you know keep their composure for the last ten minutes of this game where they've had quote-unquote issues. Um, and for them, I think the biggest thing for them is to themselves, can they keep the foot on the gas and keep going at them? You know, when they've gone at them, they've really been really effective. And tonight, it's definitely showed that when they go at teams, they're a force to be reckoned with. And if they keep doing that, they're going to be in good shape and they probably come out with, if nothing else, a tie. A lot of soccer to be played, though, with still nine plus minutes left in regulation of this 2 2 tie. Rupel, Snowball, Dees, Davalos, Geither, Posner, the forwards and midfielders for BW, with the back line still steady. Elson, Tobinick, McHugh, and Woodruff. Eighty first minute. Davalos pulls it away. Good job in the midfield. Seen a lot less of him tonight than we have in the past. Yeah, it makes me wonder if it's kind of a tactical thing or if it's, uh, you know, him being hurt or not feeling so well. or, or Perhaps what. it was Cannon Dees having a chance to kind of play in that role a little more tonight. Cannon only making, uh, I believe, his second start of the season. He's seen a lot of playing time, but... Cannon's a kid that's really worked hard. And he gives you such a great work rate when he's actually out on the field. It's not just the uh, between match training for him. He's definitely earned a chance to, to be out there at the start. He's played a lot of minutes tonight. That he has. And he, you know, you talk about him being very energetic and uh, very, very open minded. You know, he, he's one of those kids that if you if Reed asks him to do something, you know, Cannon's going to get it done. Whether it's in his best. In, interest to do so or whether he doesn't think it's you know the right call he's still going to do it that's a great pass and a good chance for Ohio Northern BW trying to get it out of harm's way Yoder had already scored once tonight you don't want to give him an open look that close to the cage that's a Poor pass from the Polar Bears. And we've got a substitution coming on here. Jeremy Faust returns, takes Posner's place. Under seven minutes to go in regulation, tied at two. Baldwin Wallace has not won a conference home game this year. They've only won one home game all season. 
That was a 3-1 win against Defiance back on September 23rd. They had a 2-1 lead for most of the uh, last half hour. But unfortunately, gave up a penalty kick goal just a few moments ago that tied it at two apiece. Work for Ohio Northern. Yoder has some space. He was going a little too fast. Lane's lost it. Davalo sends it back into the middle where Bringard comes to it. Schulte didn't send it too quickly enough to Denoy. Five thirty remaining in regulation. And a corner kick coming for the Polar Bears. J.J. Fortner, the team's leading scorer, will take the corner kick. Here it comes with the right foot. Still a chance. Schulte sends it high and left. Five minutes to go. Tied at two. Oh, and he's had a lot of corner kicks, and today just been a rough day for them, you know. When they're, they've had corner kicks in previous games, they've pretty much buried every last one of them. And tonight, it just does not seem to want to go for them. A lot of passes connecting in the midfield here, but couldn't quite get the last one to fall. Dees comes to it anyways. Rips a shot off of a defender out of bounds. Sternusty saves the day for Ohio Northern and forces a corner kick for BW. Dees on the corner. Over Geither's head, Tobinick sends it over. And Ohio Northern just clears it well out of harm's way. Good hustle by Denoy. Mihal sends it out of bounds. We're under four minutes remaining in regulation, still tied at two apiece. Each team has scored once in each half. Alongside Kyle Klimo, I'm Brendan Gulick. Final week of the regular season for BW with the season finale coming Saturday against Capital. It'll be senior day for the Jackets, but everybody more focused on trying to avenge a big lopsided loss last year to Ohio Northern. No stoppage time in college soccer, so there is exactly 318 left in our second half. It could be bound for overtime if nobody puts one in. Good ball up, played ahead for Fortner. He looks for options. Fortner bumped off into the top of the box. Still has a chance. And the ball's pulled away by Tobinek. Polar Bears didn't like the lack of a foul call. Snowball keeps it in. Two and a half minutes remaining in regulation. Okay, a good work by Tobinek there to well, Make sure they won it. Ruppel's got a chance, tries to chip the keeper, and he just misses it wide left. Tom and I came in, you know, does his job well, and he's been, he's probably been one of the most consistent players on the entire team this year. Him and Ruppel, I'd say, with Joey Gaither, have been probably the three most consistent players this year in terms of performance. Well, you certainly need to have some steady play from one of your center backs. <laughs> Unfortunately, it hasn't been enough. Yellow Jackets struggling to string together victories. They've only won back-to-back -back games once all year, and that was back in mid-September. They had wins in overtime against Worcester and then a win in regulation over Bluffton. Only time this year they've won back-to-back -back games. That was a fortunate break for BW with a minute and a half to play. 
Tied at two, a chance to maybe win it at the end. Guy threw ahead, Davalos coming over, pulled Plank out of the goal, and he kicks it high in the air. Now Yoder, just over 60 seconds to play. Lanes feeds it over. Schulte shuffles it ahead. In the corner. And that is a goal kick for BW. And the Jackets will likely take their time here. Pat Mihal sends it out with 40 seconds to go. Davalos with 28 seconds left. Tried to play it right into the middle where Geither was looking. 20 seconds left in regulation. Out of bounds and a throw in for Bolden Wallace with 13 seconds on the clock. Northern sends it out of harm's way, and that'll do it in regulation. We've got overtime tonight between BW and Ohio Northern. We'll take a short break and come back with that first overtime period. Polar Bears 2, Yellow Jackets 2 on BWYellowJackets.com.
90 minutes, not enough tonight between Ohio Northern and VW. We are tied at two going into overtime. Along with Kyle Klimo and Brendan Gulick, each team scored once in each half. The second goal for Ohio Northern a little tougher to swallow after BW had a handball in the box and allowed Ohio Northern to uh, strike a penalty kick that they easily put in the goal. So it forces the Jackets into a situation here where if they want to pick up their first home conference win of the year, they'll need to continue to play against the Polar Bears. Kyle, I know that was kind of the one blemish on the second half side of things. And with the way both these teams can score so quickly, kind of puts the game in, in an interesting, delicate balance here because both teams at times have put so many guys ahead offensively but you certainly don't want to give up a quick counterattack goal and then all of a sudden have all of your effort fall through quickly. Yeah, you know. Uh, Dees lays one into the top of the 18. It's cleared away. You know, both teams are very good at scoring goals, just like you said. And I think for BW, the thing for them is they don't send everybody forward. So I think for them, they, they always have at least, you know, three guys kind of sitting back and, kind of makes it easier for them, whereas opposed to Ohio Northern, only have two. So when they lose the ball, they kind of get counted on pretty quickly. But at the same token, ONU is also very fast at getting back, and it definitely makes the game interesting. Snowball underneath it, and it's touched over the top of the crossbar. Michael Snowball with the first real threat in overtime, and it's punched high, setting up a Kennedy's corner kick. Struck right at Dylan Blank. White College Soccer works in overtime. It's golden goal. As soon as somebody scores, the game is over. Nobody scores after this first 10 minute overtime. We'll have a two minute break and then we go to a second 10 minute overtime. Or it will still be golden goal, but Nobody scores then, it's a tie. Ohio Northern desperate for a result on the road to try and solidify an OAC tournament berth for them. Joey Geither and company trying to play spoiler and they've got a great chance here. Geither has his shot ricochet off of Grant Kayot. And BW will lose possession here. Yeah, but what great work from Joey to win the ball back there. I mean, obviously it didn't turn out the way that he wanted to with, you know, either the shot or hopefully assisting to Bryce Posner. But, I mean, you got to applaud him for at least winning the ball when, you know, it looked like ONU was going to go forward with no pressure on him. If Ohio Northern finishes in a draw, Marietta, Capital, and Northern will all be 4-3-1 and one in conference play at the end of the night. And there's a good chance Mount Union will also be 4-3-1. and one. They are playing John Carroll, and actually that game has just gone final. 3-0 John Carroll. So Mount Union would also be 4-3-1 and one at the end of the night. You get four teams with the same record going into the final game of the year. It's hard to know for certain who the tiebreakers uh, favor. Ohio Northern has losses in the conference this year to John Carroll, Capital, and Ottermont. Polar Bears have a chance, and they win. Ohio Northern on Colin Johnson scoring in overtime. Johnson's third goal of the season, and the Polar Bears come up with a big win. Baldwin Wallace not happy. They thought maybe the offside flag could have gone up. Wasn't to be. And the Yellow Jackets have everything fall in front of them in a heartbreaking fashion. They gave up a penalty kick in the second half that you could argue was kind of really how this game got to overtime in the first place. And in the 93rd minute, Colin Johnson scores and lifts uh, Ohio Northern to a road win. Third win in conference away from home for uh, Ohio Northern, and the Jackets still can't 
to come up with a home conference win. They're now 0-3-1 in home games in the OAC. The Jackets fall to 5-11-2 overall, 1-6-1 in conference play. And with the win for Ohio Northern, they're now 5-2, or excuse me, 5-3. But a 5-3 mark is good enough to guarantee them a spot in the OAC tournament. So the Polar Bears are moving on. They are going to the OAC tournament where they have had a lot of success over uh, the last several years. One of the best and most successful teams in the conference, led by the winningest coach in the OAC history in, in Brent Ridenauer. Not the way the Jackets hoped this one would end tonight with a 3-2 loss. And you can just see BW's uh, frustration. Kind of, uh, it's going to take a little while for this one to um, kind of go to the back of their mind. Well, it's going to stay. I mean, you know, you give away the PK and a you know, great call, but I don't know if it was necessarily inside the box or not. I mean, I wasn't, you know, wasn't there in front of it, so I can't make the call. But then you give a PK to go into overtime, and you know, you let up a goal three minutes into the overtime. And to be honest, he did look offside, but you know, I, the official didn't call it. So you know, you got that's one of those moments where you got to stay with your man regardless. You know, and. It's hard to do because, you know, you want that offside call to be called. So, A, you can kind of force a counterattack potentially, and, you know, you don't have to run as much then. But, I mean, you know, the call didn't go his way or the PW's way, and you can tell it's definitely hurting him. And it's going to take a lot of time to take that sting off. And, you know, I can't tell when it's going to happen, but um, you got to feel sorry for the guys because they – poured their heart and soul in this game. They did. I really thought this was one of BW's best efforts of the season. They really played hard all game long. And uh, you, you kind of hope that at least on Saturday when you've got Senior Day and Capital coming to town, a Capital team that is in a similar position as Ohio Northern, the Crusaders enter uh, Saturday knowing that if they win, they're probably going to the tournament. If they lose or if they draw, they're going to have to wait and see how it all shakes out. There's a good chance that they'll go to the tournament, but right now they're not guaranteed to get in unless they can uh, come up with a result on the road or get some help this weekend. So you're not going to get a capital team that comes in here and just rolls over. And Baldwin Wallace's seniors are going to be playing in their last career games uh, on top of the fact that it is senior day, knowing that there's no OAC tournament ahead of, uh, of BW this year. Saturday's the last chance to leave it all out on the line, and I expect the Jackets to come out and put together a good effort we just hope that they can quickly get rid of this one, um, maybe take the rest of the night to be frustrated about it, but then try and move forward because I, I feel like we did see some progress we in, did. Uh, in tonight's you know, game. They, they played very well tonight. And I, my condolences goes out to the team because I don't think they're going to pull out a win. So Colin Johnson gives Ohio Northern the win in the uh, technically the 94th minute of action. Yellow Jackets fall to 5-11-2 on the year. They're 1-6-1 and in conference play. Ohio Northern now 12-5-1 overall. They are 5-3 in the OAC, and they are OAC tournament bound. Our next broadcast is Saturday afternoon. It's the last uh, soccer broadcast of the regular season. The ladies soccer team is still potentially have a home game in front of them. They have qualified for the OAC tournament, but not sure yet whether or not they'll be at home or on the road. If they win on Saturday, there's a chance they could get an OAC home game in the tournament. If they lose or draw on Saturday, have to wait and see how things shake out. But we have a soccer game on Saturday night. We also have a football game Saturday afternoon. Capital in town for a 1.30 kickoff on the football field and then a 7 o'clock soccer game on the men's soccer field Saturday night. And that will conclude the regular season with both men's and women's soccer tournaments and volleyball tournament coming up next week. Good luck to all of the teams in competition for that. For Kyle Klimo and our entire sports information staff, I'm Brendan Gulick. Good night from Berea, where Ohio Northern wins it in overtime 3-2 over Baldwin Wallace. Have a good night, everybody.